Good morning, happy Transfer Tuesday, the day of the week where we take a look at our finances to see if there's any money moves we can make in a positive direction. So I do have some money moves to share with you guys. I actually have several things to share with you guys, but we'll start with the money moves. Whoa. So to start, I have three transfers to tell you guys about. The first update came from last Tuesday the 19th. Yes, this came in after I filmed last week's Transfer Tuesday. So Mark sent me $25 through PayPal and hopefully uh, I have a great time in Florida and enjoy my birthday weekend, etc. Thank you so much, Mark. You're so wonderful. And then Mark also sent me another $25 yesterday and said happy transfer Tuesday and he's just saying like how excited he is or how proud he is of this whole community because you guys are so encouraging and supportive and have just sent me the kindest well wishes and encouragement during unemployment and this rocky chapter of life and he is absolutely right you guys are so amazing and thank you. It's not always easy to share all of the emotional ups and downs, the financial ups and downs, and everything that's been happening lately, but I'm here for the transparency, obviously, and sharing the struggle and all of the craziness that is the job market right now and just the economy in general. So $50 in total from Mark over the last week. That's so amazing. And then on the 21st, which was last Thursday, Carol sent me $100 as a gift. Carol, you are just the kindest and sweetest. Thank you both so much. You guys are so helpful. We all know unemployment doesn't cover the bills, so I appreciate you guys helping bolster me during this time so I'm not just going backwards into my savings while I figure out what I'm doing next. Which uh, brings us to the next thing. So this morning I went to go get my car inspected and an oil change and whatever it might need because it is you know that time of the year where you gotta I have to start getting those things done like the registration I have to do that. Um, but I took my computer and while I was there, I opened my computer and I found an email asking for an interview from a job I applied to, which is so funny because I left myself this note on my couch last night to follow up with this job today because it had been exactly two weeks since I applied and just in my research, I'm like, how long should I wait? And I don't know. The, the recommendations I was seeing for these days is like give hiring managers and recruiters or whatever two weeks to sort through. So today was two weeks and I opened my computer at the dealership and I had an email asking for an interview. So unfortunately it is on Tuesday, which is next Tuesday, which is the day I'm flying home from Florida. But they just said, you know, let us know if this date and time doesn't work. So I did. So hopefully we'll get that rescheduled for later in the week next week when i'm back and whoa so this job this one is interesting because i found it on linkedin it is a permanent full-time marine science career position i was jazzed about it at first i am overqualified and not that i care like obviously i'm overqualified for a lot of things i've been applying to just because there isn't much as you all know, if you're in the job market, you know it's like a really strange time right now. So I was excited about this job because it is a job for an offshore marine monitor and at sea scientist. Like, hello. <laughs> of course, I, I didn't have to try that hard to jam pack my resume and cover letter with all of the buzzwords from the job posting just because they're already in there. I'm already a protected species observer, which is uh, one of their preferred attributes. It's not a requirement. The requirements are a college degree in the biological sciences, current first aid and CPR, able to work flexible schedule long hours, physically and mentally able to work at sea, 
be able to pass the training requirements and be able to work with fish. She check all of those things. And then preferred attributes are currently holding at state monitoring or protected species certifications, background in fisheries, marine science, scientific field work, or biology, experience on boats, experience with Northeast Atlantic fish and mammal identification, interest in fisheries technology, desire and motivation to work in a high growth business. Hi, hello, it's me. It's me you're looking for. <laughs> so, boom. So obviously when I applied, I, I sent my at sea monitor certificate and my protected species observer certificates and my first aid and CPR certificates. And I was like, ma'am, yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> in the cover letter, I talked about my grad research and experimenting with new fisheries technology and gear. Y'all, just like ding, 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 ding. Hey, I'm so excited about this interview. However, this whole time, okay, so it's been, like I said, two weeks to the day today since I applied. And in that time, I found it on LinkedIn and LinkedIn shows you how many applicants. So like every good job posting these days, a million and one applicants, okay, specifically 73 applicants as of right now. And that's just the number of people that have confirmed that they applied to this job on LinkedIn. So there's probably more than that because the posting itself says, if you're interested in applying, submit your shit to this particular email address. So there's probably more than just the 73. So this whole time I'm like, oh man, another one of those postings is just like hundreds of applicants. Damn it. You know, like, obviously the more of a mountain of applicants, the more likely it is that your shit is just going to get buried in the pile. However, obviously, luckily, <laughs> because I have all of these certifications and direct at sea fisheries monitoring experience, luckily the buzzwords on the resume got combed through and I was selected for an interview, but I was just like, oh man, that many applicants? Yeah. It's rough. It's rough out there. Even though I have an interview, I'm going to have to go in strong, <laughs> real strong. So this particular position, they said there's two locations, either Gloucester, Massachusetts or Portland, Maine. I'm okay with either. Totally okay. When I was a fisheries observer in prior years, I was out of New Bedford, Massachusetts, and I covered everywhere from... Maine down to Virginia. Because I was from Maine and familiar with the coast of Maine, they often sent me up to Maine and places north of New Bedford. So I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the docks and fish processing houses and all of the little nooks and crannies up the coast of Maine. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So obviously I'll let you guys know. I'm probably just super excited because I feel like I have a glimmer of hope in what has felt like a really daunting and unapproachable or un... some unattainable, some kind of weird like lost in the sea of applicants in this world right now just because... Like every job post I'm seeing is so many freaking applicants. That it's just like every job feels like a mountain to climb. So it's, you just have to be so specific and strategic with hitting those buzzwords from the job posting in your resume, in your cover letter, and just boo, 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 boo. Because it's, damn, it's cutthroat out there, guys. It is so crazy. And even just looking at my growing list of you're having to apply to so much because you're hearing back from like 1% of things that it's a little bit lost in the weeds. As a condition of unemployment, I have to be applying to or interviewing for or whatever, at least two things a week. And they obviously want you to keep track of this shit in case you ever get audited and they have questions or whatever. So I've just been spreadsheeting all of my job applications and it just feels like there's so much more involved in trying to find a job nowadays you're having to apply to so many more just the sheer volume 
just to even try and keep up with the competition in this job market is just it's a lot when an interview comes in it's like ah (laughs) cutthroat gotta be on your a-game and speaking of that i haven't heard back from the farm yet but she did say you know like sometime this week it's still early so i figure probably on thursday if i haven't heard back yet i'll follow up i know they got a lot going on they haven't hired their help yet and they need it and they had two sick kids right now so like i get it they got a lot so i'm trying not to hound people either but also I would, I would like to work. <laughs> I would just like to work. But also, this is... You guys, I'm moving out at the end of April, and I have not scheduled movers yet for this reason, basically. <laughs> like, where am I moving? Pretty sure I'm moving home, but like... Oh my god, if, if, something, if something like this... A full-time career position in the field that I spent so much money to have degrees for. It would be nice to use them. Yes, it would be nice to just chill with the mentals and just work on a farm picking veg. Like, give me something to do physically where I can check out and just work. Just work. Um, And give my mental space a bit of a break for a growing season absolutely that sounds immensely appealing to me as well so like two completely different directions but i'm perfectly okay with either (laughs) just something that like can you not eat that you know better just something to give me a direction i guess i hate feeling directionless or like a useless person which I'm not I'm not I'm just it's just it's just a feeling I have when I'm unemployed apparently so much up in the air oh lord have mercy so I figured after this weekend I'm going to Florida for the weekend for my birthday weekend for Easter weekend to see my best friend and like get some life back into my life because I've just been feeling very closed off and stuck indoors and just kind of stewing in the mental space of unemployment and job hunting right now so it's gonna be so lovely there's so much going on so i figured after this trip i would schedule movers and have a clearer sense of where i'm going because i don't i can't schedule movers without being able to tell them where they're moving my shit to so it's like but also i don't want to wait too late in case there's no one available but also If that happens, whatever, I'll deal with it. I've only used movers once before, so clearly I'm okay with just doing it myself, renting a U-Haul van by myself, phoning friends and family to come help. My friends have offered, you know, provide beer and some food and we're there to help. So worst case scenario, I have options. Plus I know movers cost a lot. Uh, I think last time I used movers it was a little over four hundred dollars i think but that was just a couple towns away it'll be more certainly moving you know quite a bit further away uh so i know that is going to play into the price but i'm thinking if it's like a thousand dollars ish or less i'm okay with that anything crazier than that and just like that just seems so not worth it. I know moving sucks, but that's so much money. So <laughs> still so much up in the air. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm rambling about this move, but it, I don't like it when nothing is pinned down because the future is uncertain. So it's just like, uh, there's so many avenues and ways that this might play out that's rum- that are rumbling through my head. So that's why I'm just like a little bit all over the place with it because it is an all over the place situation. <laughs> That's enough about that. The other financial update. On Sunday, I signed uh, my paperwork for a new lease because we found a new tenant and his background check looked better, much better. (laughs) And his prior landlord references were positive. So I feel great about that. I haven't gotten confirmation that the work is complete. I'm gonna follow up with them today. But uh, the new tenant 
it has signed the lease for a thousand dollars a month and that is a pretty good increase from the prior tenant that's 266 dollars per month more cash flow coming to me so that is exciting the previous tenant was on a two-year lease and in in that time we've seen across the country like y'all know the housing market rent growth no one can afford to live anywhere like i get it i'm not trying to be that landlord either i'm just going with whatever the property management team is telling me is like market rent right now so that's in their hands um so they found someone at a thousand dollars a month and so okay let's let's go with it and just hope for the best as you guys know i've been saving every penny of my rental income the last two years just because i don't need it to live on and i've wanted that cushion for real estate i'm just letting it grow and it has kind of happened that repairs and maintenance have eaten back most of the cash flow that i've made over the last couple years which is frustrating however i'm not worried about it because the equity growth in the home since I bought it has been fantastic as well. So the the month to month cash flow hasn't been that big of a deal. It's been grown enough to cover the repairs and the new HVAC system last summer and whatnot. So to me, it's totally fine. The growth and the equity alone is totally worth it for me. I went into real estate investing with the long term goal in mind and I bought this house thinking it would be a long-term buy and hold. The first couple years of owning a property is always a bit of a settling period and like working through the kinks of owning a new to you property and just getting to understand it and whatever, you know, getting things fixed that had been neglected and whatnot. So the last couple of years, I haven't really worried too much about the cash flow. I knew eventually in the long run, it would start to pay off a little bit more and a little bit more over time because, you know, the tenants paying down the mortgage and there's been equity growth. And I knew, you know, slowly over time, there's also generally rent growth. So it's all really a long-term game and I've been keeping that in mind. So I feel like this is the first step of where that kind of long-term view is starting to take shape a little bit. So now I've got a higher rent coming in. It's got a new HVAC. Now it's getting the work done to fix the window and just little things, you know, fix lighting fixtures and new light bulbs and just little things to get it ready for the next tenant. I'm not aware of any other big issues at the moment. We'll just see what shakes out with the new tenant. Hopefully they pay on time and there's no issues and whatever, but you know, it's all a gamble obviously, but I'm happy, I guess, to kind of see that long-term growth start to materialize a little bit in the increased monthly cash flow. The reality is being a long distance landlord is hard. I know I get way overcharged by contractors and maintenance work and I can't like put eyes on things to make arguments or like show me why that needs to be replaced because I don't feel like it does, you know, that kind of thing. And I, I knew that. So there's extra cost in that aspect as well. And that it is what it is. Will I keep the property long, long, long term? I don't know. But for right now, for right now, I'm so insanely happy to, happy with the equity growth. That is, yes, <laughs> my always long-winded explanations. <laughs> All right, that's enough yakking. Thank you guys so much for being here. Mark, Carol, I appreciate you guys infinitely. Today's car appointment costs $334.88. <laughs> so uh, you guys' help will absolutely be going towards that <laughs> thank you guys thank you for being here thank you for all of your encouragement and positivity during this time i know there's so many of us dealing with this job market craziness right now and housing in affordability so man like hang in there everybody it's rough out there <sighs> we'll figure it out <laughs> we'll get through this